Hello everyone and welcome to SE Geek, the internet's most passionate software engineering show. I'm your host, the Software Engineering Geek, and today I'm going to be talking about compile time metaprogramming using AST transforms in Groovy. That's a mouthful and it sounds a lot more complicated than it actually is. So let's actually so let's break it down. What is compile time metaprogramming? The idea is that you have code that will modify other code but at compile time. So basically metaprogramming but it's done at compile time. And this avoids the typical uh, problem of you know metaprogramming where you take a performance hit for it because it's this is actually done at compile time rather than at runtime. So in Groovy there are these things called uh, AST transforms and Within within Groovy, um, there's actually two different types. There's uh, local transforms, which are done with uh, annotations, which I'm going to talk about quite a bit more. And there's actually global transforms, which uh, a lot of those you just take advantage of by using Groovy the Groovy language itself and don't even realize it. So within uh, the Groovy JDK, if you've actually looked through that, and I've talked about some of the methods that are added to that, all those methods are added using global transforms. So basically, you know, a lot of like just the extra things that Groovy kind of does for you within the JDK, that's being done through the global transforms. Now, an example of moving on to local transforms is this at two string. So there's this class, and basically, I, I'm sure within an IDE, you've generated up a two string before just because it's like, why do I want to write out this code? It's pretty, you know, simple. It shouldn't, you know, it's not something interesting to write. Well, if I take this and go down to the Groovy console, there's something called inspect AST. Now this is good just to so that you can see what code is being generated. Um, just to talk a little bit on a little uh, tangent, uh, AST transforms are probably not something you're going to write. Uh, mainly they're written by uh, language designers and framework designers. But if, you're get, if you get into them, I might do another video later on on how to do them. But it's, it's a very different way of thinking, and it's more complex than a lot of Groovy code that you've seen before. But just looking at the AST transform, this is the code that it generates up for you. So it generates up a two-string for you, and essentially you didn't have to write all this code. You didn't have to generate it from your IDE. It just happens at compile time, which is actually pretty nice. So let's go for another example. I found this article, which was written by Ken Cousin, and I found it off the Groovy Weekly Newsletter. And basically, he contrasts uh, in this article uh, Java, uh, plain old Java objects, POJOs, and plain old Groovy objects. So if you've ever had to write plain old Java objects, you uh, have seen before where you have to write setters, getters, constructors, a lot of this extra code, which would normally be written by an IDE. Now, later on, he shows how using just one AST transform, he gets all of that functionality in this small little bit of code. So let's take a, another look at this. So this is uh, the code from his article. And if I look at the Java version, we have about 91 lines of code here. So, you know, it's a lot of just boilerplate verbose code that you probably wouldn't write anyways. So you can boil that down into Groovy into 10 lines of code. Personally, if I had to maintain a huge code base, I would rather maintain, you know, the Groovy code that uses this because it's a lot less code, it's more concise, and I don't have to worry about, you know, even looking at this code. So let's take a look at this in the Groovy console under inspect AST and just see how much code uh, code is generated for us quite a bit here so if you look through this 
you'll see uh, that there is a hash code, which is one of the things at Canonical does. If you look in through, if you look through the documentation, which I'll provide links in the show note, uh, Canonical adds uh, hash code equals, and I think something else. I'm not sure offhand. I'd have to look at the documentation myself. But you know, it adds this functionality that you'd normally have to write for you know a plain old Java object just out of the gate for you. Uh, and there are also ways in these uh, AST transforms to modify what they do. Oh, it adds, two, yeah, two string equals in hash code. That's what Canonical does. Yep. So, and it also adds the getters and setters, which are done uh, just by global transforms, which you get, you know, just by default, which you can override these by providing your own implementation in the class, but it's something you just get for free. So that's kind of the power of these AST transforms is they give you a lot of, you know, code for essentially just, you know, adding a little annotation or the fact that they're just there in the background and you don't take a performance hit, um, you know, other than the code actually being run, uh, you know, that functionality is just added there and this you know, gives Groovy a lot, a lot of power to add things to the language that aren't there just out of the box. And if you scroll through the documentation, there are a lot of uh, AST transforms. This is the the new documentation on, from Groovy Lang, and they added a lot of documentation here. There is even some uh, documentation on how to create AST transforms. Um, which, as I said, it's it's a little bit of a different mindset. Uh, if you're into compilers and you want to learn more about going in that direction, I would definitely suggest you, you, you look at that. But for someone who's just consuming and using Groovy in day-to-day -day language, uh, you might leave that to another time. Personally, I've made two AST transforms in my career, one of which is not being used anywhere anymore, and another one which is actually currently being used at my current job. So, you know, that, and that's just me because I'm particularly geeky enough to do a video show like this and talk about AST transforms. So, that's pretty much all I had to have to say about AST transforms. Check them out. Uh, they can make a, a lot of your coding a lot easier, and I'll talk to you next time.